This reader interview is sponsored by the patrons of the Rereading Wolf podcast. So right now we have uh, Stuart Ham, a bass player extraordinaire and longtime Earthlister as well. How you doing, Stuart? I'm doing great. I'm super excited to be here. I think it's the first interview I've done in years where I'm assuming no one's going to ask me what kind of strings I play. So uh, what kind of strings you play? <laughs> <laughs> you knew that was coming. JHS Boomers, 45s through 105s. <laughs> no, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, one thing that's fun is whenever we talk to like Swanwick or any of the other authors, it's always kind of cool because we're like, okay, we're not asking about your stuff. We want to know what you think about another guy. And it's, yeah. it's kind of a different different kind of chat. That's actually, it's been really fun. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I mean, especially since, you know, the music industry appears to have disappeared. Uh, maybe there is a future for literary criticism for me. And I think it's <laughs> the only thing that may pay less in the music industry. So you mean the first one to set your critical analysis to a good, a good baseline. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, you want to, you want to start the questions? Let's rock it. Okay. First encounter with a wolf story. My brothers and my dad and I were always throwing books back and forth. And I believe I was up in Norwich, Vermont at my father's house. And my older brother, Chris, who teaches Chinese literature at the University of Washington, I believe this is years ago, sent him like an email of, of some sort of file, not before PDFs, of uh, Bluesberry Jam, I guess, because he thought my father would be interested in he being a musicologist. And uh, I think my dad printed it out on some old, like the old computer paper with the holes on the side. And I read that story and it was pretty good. I'm generally suspect of people writing, non-musicians writing about music, unless it's Spinal Tap. They don't really understand <laughs> the uh, what it's about. Uh, so I was intrigued. And I mean, you know, I reread it. And I think as we were discussing, it sort of talks about cultural appropriation before that was even a thing, right? In, in some aspect of that story. And then right. and then that that interested me. To, I guess I got out and, and purchased Strange Travelers. And even though Wolf suggests you don't sit down and read them short stories all the way through, I did. <laughs> and then when I got to the last story, where you realize that those, you know, the main character is actually a character in a dream of another character who's starting the revolution. Uh, that sort of really let me know that something else was going on here. And obviously his language and writing is beautiful. So. Yeah. Okay. Favorite novel or short story, either or both? Tough one. Uh, I'm going to have to go for a lesson. Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for David Lynch and Terry Gilliam to make the movie out of that one. I think it would be pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I actually think it's a pretty funny story. I don't know why, but I, I do hold that story near and dear to my heart. Yeah. I think it is supposed to be funny, right? Yeah. Right. And, and the and the end bit about, you know, it could be this or it could be a brain aneurysm. That's just, you know, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I, I find it funny in the way like Kafka is funny, right? Like just sort of surreal and horrible at the same time. Yeah. It's, it's a funny one because... You know, if you try to apply at least what seems to be the general, <laughs> you know, reading of, of Wolf and trying to look for hidden meanings <laughs> or connections. Yeah, I guess I'm not as into that as, as as many people are, but I don't think you can really approach that story that way unless I'm missing something. But it's just so uh, out of the over the top crazy and uh, disjointed in the way that our dreams and fears are. Right. It's it's just pretty funny. I've heard a lot more people talk about Four Lays than lately. Yeah, it's it was on. I know the other the Gene Wolfe literary guys did it, and I've heard a lot of people. I don't know. Lately, more people have talked about it. I don't know if that says something about the times or <laughs> or what. But um, favorite Wolf word. I'm gonna go with C Rack's original name that is never named. Oh yeah, right? yeah. That's pretty a bleak answer. I wonder if that comes up in a different question. We'll see. <laughs> I, I'm also I'm also a big fan of Ar 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 Arctother and Smilodon just because they're cool animals, and I never knew that those were the names of them. So, <laughs> yes. How about a personal non-consensus theory about a wolf story or your favorite one? Ooh, <clears throat> this is sacrilegious, I know, but um, I think that on some level, Gene Wolf was an engineer. And he also worked as a writer. And I think that some, and I also think he had a really a, a, a wicked sense of humor, right? And enjoyed, I think, especially when he caught on to people that are really, you know, looking for the key. He may have messed around with people's brains on that one, 
you know, and <laughs> tried to add fake clues and and false things. So I, did, I mean, I'm a, obviously a big fan of his work, but I, I think it's not crazy to suggest that sometimes he's just doing the work, you know, uh, and using an engineer's mind to construct a story and maybe just, you know, grabbing stuff, you know, like all the Borges references in the mm-hmm. new sun and just sort of throwing them in there as a device. And, and not everything you wrote is the most deep, meaningful, interconnected, grand unified theory of everything. I know it's sacrilegious, but that's my story. <laughs> so yours is an anti-theory. I, I don't know. I mean, boy, I, I certainly don't have that answer, you know. Is, I mean, it's the, yeah. what was it? Was it, was it Mark Armini that, that got the, his Christmas card back where Wolf had scribbled, you know, no, you know, that whole story. Right. I mean, that's great. Yeah, I mean, you have reliable, unreliable narrators. And if you have an unreliable author as well, you'd have very little chance. I think of understanding what's <laughs> actually going on. No, no, that's good. I like it. Most frustrating mystery in a wolf story. Well, you two with your rereading wolf, has really got, I just, just finished the whole earth cycle. Still don't like earth of the new sun. I'm sorry. Uh, but I'd have to say that he ties everything up so neatly at the end of Citadel that it seems to me, we really should know who Severian's sister is. Right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I just don't, but he, he doesn't spell it out. No. I, I'm still going for, for Marin, you know, the, the witch with the command at the top of the stone town. I don't know why. I don't think it's, Pia, the late girl, it just seems a stretch. But it just seems since he ties up everything else and everything else sort of has a yin and a yang, it's kind of strange that he left that one dangling. Yeah, I had a, I mentioned something to Craig just recently that it just feels like sometimes he's just parading women in front of us with little clues. Hey, she could be his sister. She could be his sister. She could be his sister. Absolutely. And and who knows what pressure he was under, you know, from the editors to toss in like that horrible sex scene and, you know, stuff just to appeal to the uh, sweaty palmed, you know, teenagers <laughs> and young adults that are going to read it because the cover looks cool. Right. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. Uh, this was really enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Oh, thank you guys. I look forward to uh, next few years as you plug your way. And I hope I'm still alive when we get to the short sun. I hope I'm still alive. <laughs> I hope we are too. Okay. All right, guys. Well, that'll do us. All right. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was again entirely sponsored by the patrons of the Rereading Wolf podcast. You can go to patreon.com slash rereading wolf to play a part in bringing other amazing things like this into the world. And if you want to take on the five questions with us, reach out to us by email or one of the other methods listed in the show notes of this episode. We need to bring you closer to me, so don't you squirm. Don't-